What's your definition of awesome? Well, you know me. I love every single step of the process from finding the project, we're gonna start a new project, demo, oh, I love demo. Demo days really excite me. I love every site check-in to see the progress as it goes along. It's always exciting and it's always a surprise. But you know what's super duper awesome today? Today, it's awesome to be able to take a look at that checklist and know that we've ticked all the boxes and I can start showing you around. Oh, finishing touches. Come in, come in and see. We're getting so close. I think that works. What do you think? I like it. We needed a bench for here and we've used up some leftover cabinets. And then I had Chris make this bench. These are leftover pieces of lumber that they bought thinking they would use them outside and then we didn't use them. So look, presto, it took about half an hour and Chris and Adam made me this amazing bench. So are you gonna leave the bench that color? Uh, no, that is the color of exterior deck boards. So we are gonna thin down some paint with a bit of water and we're gonna transform this brown bench into charcoal gray so it goes with our stairs. And you know what today is? Set up day in the kitchen. Fee, let's get to unpacking. We've been busy. We've been vacuuming. We've been cleaning up. Fiona's unpacking dishes. I'm going to get flowers organized, or should I say leaves. The guys are outside making some good progress on the deck. Hot tub was moved, thanks to you. Now it's not right outside the window. So they are making a new set of stairs off the deck. Okay, that's this one. What do you think, Fee? Do you like these? Yeah, those are cool. You know what they're called? Are they banana tree leaves? Good guess. They're actually called Monstera leaves. I don't know if that's because of the size. They're, they're like monster leaves, Monstera leaves. So the nice thing about them, because this is a rental, is they will last. Do you know what's exciting? We're almost done. You have lipstick on your teeth. Hmm, that's not good. So here's what I'm thinking. I think we want to set up a morning station. Okay. Oh, that's the sound of our bench getting stained. Isn't that exciting? It's going to be done like that. Okay, I'm thinking morning station. So coffee and coffee and toast. Okay. I'm thinking there. You like that? Yeah. Got a delivery. Oh, what is it? What is it? It's from Nespresso. Nice. You know what, I'm in the mood for a coffee, so I'm assuming this can help me out. Well, I didn't get it for you. I actually got it for the renters. Oh, okay. Where we're located, it's gonna be at least 15 minutes to the nearest coffee shop. But it's different than the one we have at home. This is the newest, this is the latest grace. I'm feeling a little bit envious of this. Our rental is gonna have a nicer machine than we have at home. This is the Virtuo Next machine. It's pretty slick, I gotta um, say. It's super slick. Well, I'm not gonna put an ugly coffee maker in a gorgeous kitchen. Woo. Okay, that is seriously cool. How did, it, how did you open that? Oh. So how long does it take to set this thing up? It's gonna take me three seconds to get it set up. Seriously? Yeah. Fee, can you unpack the capsules? Wait. Stuffed it full of vanilla. No! <laughs> you have to leave some room. Okay, so the funny thing about this is when you look at the top, it tells you how big a cup it makes. You know our old machine at home? Mm -hmm. The machine, our very first machine, had little capsules and they made a little amount. But now it makes a regular size cup of coffee. So for those of us who like a really big cup of morning coffee, this is ours. And there's five different sizes. But we have to leave room in here. You've overfilled it. We have to leave room for this one. This is my favorite, Bianco Forte, and it has this rich cream on top. Should we make Chris one of these? He's been working so hard outside today. Can I interest you guys in an espresso? You read my mind. Yes, please. I would love one. Chris deserves the first coffee out of this machine. Isn't this the moment when you actually feel like your kitchen is yours, that it's done and it's complete? When the counters are clean and the stuff's put away 
and you're making a nice cup of coffee. It's pretty here, here. good when you know my favorite coffee, thank right? you. Right? Does that mean we've spent too much time thank together? No, much. it's just the right amount of time, I think. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Cheers. Don't get cheers. used to it. <laughs> We're still working on a few straggling bits and pieces outside, but on the inside, my friends, we are done and I am going to start showing you around. So let's start here. This is the foyer and let's remember back to where we started. We had tones of honey and this was the beginning of our flooring buffet. But now this foyer sets the tone for what you can expect throughout the rest of the house. As you can see, this is a home that is now dressed in contemporary style and cool neutrals. That's what you can expect to see a lot of. So if contemporary and neutral is your jam, join me. It's going to be a really great ride. So let's talk about what we did here. We couldn't change the footprint of this room. It's petite. We've talked a lot about the tile and I think the tile was a fabulous choice. I love that you all weighed in and voted. 66% of you were on Team Chris and wanted to mix up the colors. All three of us agreed we like that one. Yeah, I like the variety. But I agreed with the 23% of you who liked the diagonal lines for a cleaner, more modern look. I think our diagonal pattern with our three color hexagonal tile was a winner. But you know what the real winner is? It's the tile itself. Now that we have had the tile installed for months, we've had tons of traffic, lots of mud, lots of dirt. And what I can tell you is this is a really durable floor. This is a winning solution. And as I was mopping it the other day, I said to myself, I am going to use this floor again. You could use it just as a single color. You could use two colors. You can install any pattern you want. You can have lots of fun with it. And that's the best part of design. It's the interpretation of the materials for how you want to work with them and how you want to live in the space. You know that site visit after site visit, I complained about the honey color on the walls, but now look at it. We've covered them with wallpaper. Yes, this is one of my wallpapers, so I'm you know, particularly drawn to it. But the idea here was to choose a wallpaper that has texture and pattern, and also a dark forgiving color. The room gets lots of natural light, so I wasn't worried about it being too dark. One of the things I was worried about once we'd installed the wallpaper was I looked up to the ceiling and it looked terrible. So you may remember way, way, way back, we started with stucco ceilings in this house and Charlotte lovingly scraped them off, but it's hard to get them perfectly, perfectly, perfectly smooth without paying for a plasterer to skim coat them. So you know what I did? I found two leftover rolls of wallpaper in my office and I decided to put them on the ceiling. And the amazing thing is the lighter tone goes with the light color in the tile and the darker tone goes with the darkest color of the tile. So this is all helping it tie together. And why not play up the ceiling, play up whatever features you have. This is a small foyer, but what I've always loved is the elevated ceiling height that starts low and it goes to soaring at the top. That's a feature, I want to embrace it. I've always been a fan of either a pebbled glass or a seeded glass shade because look at the pattern it throws on the ceiling. I also want you to think about something practical because you know I am Miss Practicality. When you install a glass fixture right by the front door, it's always going to be getting the dust from outside and that glass may not stay sparkling clean for quite as long as you might hope. So if you choose to have a pebbled or textured glass shade, A, you won't notice if it gets just a little bit dusty and B, it creates this great pattern on the ceiling. To tie into the brass fixture on the light, I used brass poles on these wall mounted cabinets. And you might be thinking, Sarah, those look like kitchen cabinets. You are absolutely correct. These are two 30 inch wide by 40 inch tall cabinets. And the total cost for two of them is $200. I think you can literally never have enough storage in an entryway, in a mudroom, in a foyer. And so since this was kind of dead space, I decided to wall hang them. They are simple, they are crisp, they work perfectly with all the other white elements in this room. The trim is white. You'll notice I've hung a pair of inexpensive white framed mirrors here on the wall, one for the shorter set, one for the taller set, and then I always like to have some hooks. Now, I don't want this to be please hang 17 coats on one hook. 
to the point that they are completely overburdened. So I use these really fun contemporary hooks that are made of bamboo and it's enough just to hang a light coat, a hat. There's also hanging space in the closet and we've created this little bench. What I like about having a bench is it allows you space to tuck shoes and boots and bags underneath. We replaced all of the interior doors with this shaker panel. That was definitely the right call and it has added a more crisp finishing touch to the house. When it came to the metal doors, the exterior door, I decided not to spend money replacing it and ditto the garage door. But the guys came up with a clever solution. We had a leftover kitchen panel, which they applied to cover the six panel metal door. So it gives it a slightly crisper look now. I think it works with the color palette. Okay, that's it for this room. If you wanna see the kitchen. Normally, you don't get to see the kitchen till way later. We usually make you watch all the episodes before we show you the kitchen, but the kitchen is just inside the front door. So today, we're going straight to the kitchen. Now, it's time to talk about the kitchen. Hands up if you like a good before and after. And I really hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that you think that this is a dramatic before and after. Is it making the cut for you? Because from the first minute I walked into this house, isn't this awesome? It just somehow grabbed a little piece of my heart and I don't know why. But now when I stand here and this place is done, I am so happy in this house. There's something about it. It's the openness of the space now, and honestly, it's the crispness of it all. One of the things I absolutely adore the most, and it's not anything I did, is this view. They always say you can change everything about a home except location, and location is everything. Well, I think the way this house is sited on this property is awesome, and the views it takes in, winter, spring, all of these things are so cool, but you don't wanna hear about that. You want me to talk about the kitchen. So let's talk about the kitchen. Let's talk about what we did in this kitchen. Whenever it comes to kitchen design, you know me, the number one thing I wanna do is I wanna take it and I wanna shake it. I wanna take all the ingredients and I wanna throw them back out on the table in a completely different way. I never want to do what we started with. And you may be looking at this kitchen saying, Sarah, you love an island. And you're right, I do absolutely love an island. But there was something about this space that said to me, uh-uh, an island is not the way to go. A giant peninsula is the way to go. We took out a non-load bearing wall that separated the kitchen from the dining room. So now this is one glorious big open space. And what I like about having a peninsula instead of an island is the island would have needed to run parallel to the way the room runs. The peninsula runs perpendicular, which means that now whoever's standing working in the kitchen has a seamless flow of conversation with everybody sitting at the bar stools, of which we have four comfy, yet also practical, wipeable, and durable bar stools. Plus, we have a great connection and vantage point looking into the dining room. So you know me, I'm always talking about mission control when I'm in the kitchen, because if I am preparing a gourmet feast for you, I am going to be here using this big run of counter space. We've got the sink right close by, handy right here, and then cooking central happening on the back wall. So it's really about making the most of all of these functions, making the most of the space. There is no one right answer, and that is what can make kitchen design so challenging, is you have to navigate and find the best solution. So I always want you to think about how can I have the best connection with people who aren't in the kitchen? How can I have the greatest, biggest workspaces? How can I have the easiest cleanup, maybe with a really cute view? And how can I make sure that there's also ample storage plus circulation space. And I think that because this kitchen is directly off the foyer and in a traffic zone, I didn't want anything to feel pinched. So look at it. We basically have the equivalent of a dance floor or a yoga studio right here in the middle of the kitchen. Doesn't get any better than that. I always wanna build a kitchen from the ground up and what is on the floor matters. 
It was very important to me for the kitchen to have a super durable surface. So this is Nordic Grey marble and it is a honed finish. So the great thing about a honed finish is it's easy to sweep and clean up and I tell you, this shows no dust and no dirt. So this is a family friendly solution. Plus, I have to tell you, if you're a barefoot person, nothing feels better underfoot on a hot summer day than cool honed stone. It's really yummy. Okay, let's talk about the kitchen cabinets. What do you think? Are you a fan? I am a fan of this dark gray and it has been a real leader in a lot of the decisions that I've made throughout the rest of the main floor. So I would always encourage you to make your cabinetry decision early on in the game. This is not a traditional kitchen. This is not a transitional kitchen. This is 100% clean lined, contemporary and modern. It also has this really clever integrated handle, which means no hardware. Now you may think I love hardware for an accent, but one of the things we're seeing a lot of in contemporary kitchens is these integrated styles of doors and it just creates a crisp, clean look. And it also means that you don't need to spend money on your hardware budget because there is none. My goal was to keep this space feeling as crisp and streamlined as possible. And the cabinetry is a big part of that. So I'm gonna say thumbs up for the cabinetry. Let's talk about the countertops. Today we have counters. Here on the peninsula, what you'll notice is I've gone with a waterfall edge. And what this means is you're buying a piece of stone that goes around the top of the counter and down to meet the floor. And you might say to me, Sarah, is that really necessary? Because that means buying more stone. I'm gonna say, yes, it is. You know why? Because this is the main flow of traffic through the house and it will get bumped often, whether it's by people, dogs walking by, vacuums, bags, boxes, you name it. Having that waterfall edge makes it extra durable and also always makes it look so sleek. I love it, can't get enough of it. I'm a big waterfall fan. I wanna talk about some of the fun things. What's not been fun has been, honestly, finishing a renovation during a pandemic. Mm, not fun at all. This is my new office. I do have an office here at the farm but it is upstairs. And right now I like working in the hub of the kitchen. I had to resort to finishing this kitchen with only things that were available to be accessed online. And that is not the way I normally run my projects. You know me, I love to go shopping. I love to go out and find the very best. I love to be in the stores. I like to, oh, I'm a toucher and a feeler. I wanna know, do I love this? and I was 100% deprived of that process and it was really, really tricky. But you know what came? You know what followed deprivation? Inspiration and creativity. So check out these wall sconces. These wall sconces did not start their life as wall sconces. These were pendant lights. And Charlotte and I were in here one day and we were looking at a couple of different options that we had on site for lighting. And we determined that wouldn't it be cool if we had a sconce that kind of looked like this. So when is a pendant light not a pendant light? Well, when it becomes a wall sconce, of course. When you've got a peninsula, by default, you're gonna end up with some extra space, some dead space, because of the way the counter is going to turn. So I like to use that for storage. Because we're adjacent to the door, the exit door, I didn't wanna have a stool jammed right into the wall. So this is a great space to put a nice deep cabinet. This is a place to store placemats or bulky items, maybe even office supplies, kids' artwork and craft supplies for that sort of multi-function kitchen. When it comes to renovating on a budget, you're not gonna wanna splurge for panel-ready appliances. I don't need the dishwasher to be hidden, and I don't need the refrigerator to have a panel covering on it so nobody can see it. I decided to opt for very crisp, contemporary, streamlined, stainless steel appliances throughout this kitchen and they do the trick. If you're going for a 30 inch range, think about trying to find one that actually has five burners instead of four. So this is a gas range, but instead of the standard four burners, I've got five. If you go to a 36 inch range, you can get six burners, but it's gonna cost you at least twice the price 
for just one more burner. So I like to make that trade off and get an entire package of appliances that can be more affordable, get the job done. And look at this vent hood. For so many years, people have wanted to see a big, bulky, stainless vent hood with the chimney as the sort of anchor of the kitchen. But you know what, now people want a lot of appliances and a lot of function to just just be discreet and hide. So look how slimline profile this vent hood is. It has lights in it, which is fantastic. It does the trick, but it is really just a discreet functional accent rather than a, hey, look at me, because I think that this kitchen wants to be discreet. When it comes to accessorizing your counters or counterscaping as they call it, I like to only have elements out that I am guaranteed to use all the time. That means every day. So I like some cutting boards with a few little bowls for when I'm chopping and prepping. Everything that I introduced in this kitchen had to be contemporary, clean lines, streamlined and beautiful. If you're gonna put it out and you're gonna celebrate it each and every day, Indulge yourself, get something that you absolutely love. So we have a plate of apples, a bowl of grapes, some limes because I can't get enough citrus in my cooking. There is a vase with a couple of leaves because guess what, they last for weeks and weeks on end, yet make it feel like there is something gorgeous and fresh blooming in the kitchen. And even right down to the countertop appliances. I take a less is more approach. I only want those things I'm gonna use each and every single day. So for me, toaster, coffee maker, that's really all I need out. Everything else can be hidden away and pulled out only when it's needed. The key to all of this is to make sure that those final details, those finishing touches are all perfectly aligned with the design and style of the overall kitchen concept. And my concept from minute one was make it crisp, make it contemporary, make it practical, and make it family friendly. So even down to your choice of kitchen faucet. This one has a more industrial flavor, and that is so well suited to the modern style we've tried to achieve here. I couldn't be happier, and you know how I feel when I get to this exact moment of a renovation? I think, hmm, what should we do next? Well, next, I have the rest of the house to show you. So before I move on to another project, I'm gonna take you on a room by room tour. This is your favorite part, right? You love the reveals. I love showing you the reveals of what we've accomplished. So make sure you hit that button, subscribe, because I wanna take you on a tour and make sure that you don't miss a single minute.